We are starting a monthly series here called TFI Topic of the Month, aka T3M. I like short names, acronyms. And the topic for the month of January was cost cutting versus cost efficiency. As you know, as we walked into 2023, we saw major cost cutting measures across industries, which included better control on cloud cost as well as trimming down teams, which swelled during the pandemic. For this series, I'll be sitting down with founders, CEOs, and leaders of the industry to better understand what's going on and what organizations can do to ensure cost efficiency. And today we have with us once again, John Murtick, Executive Director of the Open Mainframe Project. John, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks. What are you seeing? What kind of trends you are seeing in the market when we talk about cost cutting or companies becoming more cost efficient? I think the one thing is, is the same thing that we're all uh, seeing here right now is that, you know, we're, we're seeing a ton of layoffs in um, the, over the last couple of months here. And what's sort of interesting is these layoffs in a lot of ways, if you look at the numbers, they're actually sort of reducing down to pre-COVID um, levels to some degree here. So it kind of is a little bit of a course correction. But um, I think I was even reading in some of the reports from the Google one, which um, was just a few days ago when we do this recording, um, that they they kind of, you know, over, they, it was basically a lot of uh, overestimating of um, where some demands and they kind of just, you know, let the hiring kind of continue to grow um, as they saw just the market demand for talent um, was kind of scarce. They kind of, you know, hired up. So, you know, and that's just a reality, right? You know, I think as vendors are looking at this from a course correction point of view, what you often see is people really kind of coming back and saying, well, what are our priorities? What are we good at? What are the things that we need to be focused on? And, you know, I even remember talking with companies a long time ago about that. And I'd always kind of bring back to, well, what's your core competency? Like, why, why do customers value you? You know, what is the one thing that you cannot bring, your competitors cannot bring you? And when you start to get into that mindset, then, then we get into less of a, a cutting to grow, but I think as you alluded to, it's efficiency and it's optimization and um, you know so on and so forth there. So I think that's like an over that's an overarching trend you see anytime a, a company that's very mature approaches um, this scenario. And I'm seeing a lot of that here, which long term I think is a good sign. What does this uh, you know economic challenges? Uh, look like for the for the mainframe ecosystem. First off, mainframes, like you said, it predates both of us um, by quite some time, and they have went through these valleys before. You know, they've went through the economic challenges um, of the seventies. You know, they went through the, you know, the challenges during the eighties, early nineties. They've had the boom, um, you know, and so forth. So they've, they've went through these cycles, and every time they persevere. And why is that? there's such a central point to our society to function. You know, all of that transactional processing thing from financial institutions to airlines, to tra other transportations, to healthcare, to government, all runs through it. So the need for that hardware is there. The efficiency that hardware um, can do that particular types of workloads is unparalleled. There's no other infrastructure that can do it at the same cost structure um, from that. So. You know, for companies that have the investment in hardware, and it's a big investment to get into, uh, for them, they're looking at their hardware and they're looking at all their IT inf infrastructure and saying, well, how can we do better with this? Like, how can we be more efficient? And what's nice is, is we're kind of at an interesting era as the open source communities um, around mainframe are growing, especially with a project like Zoe which was really designed around the fact of how can I make my mainframe data more accessible through the rest of the enterprise? And what it has kicked off is this larger movement here of, well, well, geez, now I can, you know, use mainframe as a part of my end tier architecture for applications. Um, maybe in some areas, I might actually think this might be a better place for parts of my workload um, because we're moving away from those, you know, uh, monolithic applications to, you know, services, multi-tiers, you know, things of that nature. What does that mean for a downturn? It, it means that a company is able to go back and look and say, I can do these workloads more efficiently here 
I have the benefit, um, if I don't want to, you know, learn ZOS, I have Z Linux that I can run on there, which is just like any other Linux. Uh, and I can shift things around to, to better optimize what I'm doing. So it fits into that whole thing. A company takes a step back and says, what is our core competencies? What are we here to do? What are we best staff to do? Um, and how can then we use the infrastructure we have to do that appropriately? And, and, I, and I think that ties in perfectly. What kind of challenges when it comes to purely in terms of cost that you are seeing there? And then we'll talk a bit about, you know, uh, impact on mainframe uh, ecosystem. You did uh, touch upon that, but I just want to specifically talk about cost. I think companies are, are, are looking, you know, not just at their personnel, but, you know, the software and services that, that they support and, and what makes sense. You know, they're, you know, looking at subscriptions or looking at, you know, different software they purchase and they they figure out, you know, is, is this a good use across the business for us? Is there other tools that we can use uh, much more efficiently? Um, I would imagine any of the subscription-based, um, you know, software services out there are probably thinking about that um, as they plan their year out here, that they're going to probably see a significant amount. Of, they're going to see more than normal churn as companies are going to kind of try to reduce onto different platforms um, and, and not have so much broadness. So, you know, I think that's going to be a part of it there. I think the other half is the company is going to look back in, you know, the, the IP that they have built internally around software and services. And they're going to say, you know, how much of this do we really need to be the only one holding up the ship? And that's where I'm anticipating new things coming out in open source because companies are going to realize, let's get a couple other people working on this. Like this is, this is, this should be a commodity piece here in a couple of years. Let's get ahead of the game and start doing this. Um, a great example is actually one of the other foundations I work with in the Academy Software Foundation. They recently announced a project called Open Review Initiative, which has contributions um, from Sony, from DNEG, from Autodesk of their various review to of their various review and approval tools um, for motion picture workflows, where the goal is, is they're going to contribute their tools into there, but then they're going to pull the best pieces out of all of that and make a canonical tool that the industry will eventually standardize on. That's the sort of things that I would start to see happening in this. I would not be shocked if we start to see this in the mainframe space where we have, you know, a couple of the big vendors come together and say, I have this tool, I have this tool, let's open source them and then let's use that as an exercise to figure out what's what are the best features of both? You know, what are the key pieces of both? And then build something that the industry can build upon. What you're saying is that we'll see, you know, kind of a reduction and do it yourself or, you know, not invented here syndrome. And folks will try to leverage open source in a way, because, you know, as you rightly said, so, so we'll see a, a lot of growth and adoption of open source as well there. You're going to see people that are going to retrench. I mean, you're going to, you know, that's, you're always going to have exception to that. But I think, the people that have been through this cycle before know that this is where the opportunity that you can think longer ahead and you have other competitors that are in sort of similar positions. Just like on the financial side, you tend to see um, a lot of mergers and acquisitions happening um, when the economy is sort of a low point because of you know a lot of the cost structures of these companies that become easier to, you know, cheaper to pick up. It's a similar dynamic here. You know, these companies are retreading. They're all, I don't want to say they're in desperation mode, but they're they're certainly more actively interested in how to collaborate to be cost efficient. And that ends up being an additional driver um, towards all of this. How is the open mainframe project helping the ecosystem uh, solve this issue, which is, you know, once again, uh, becoming more cost efficient, optimize your resources. And of course, you folks do open source, so it's a very well-placed project. There's always the one half on the technical collaboration. We see projects like uh, Zoe, uh, Feilong, um, you know, a number of our other ones, which uh, are getting more mature. Um, they're getting more adoption. Uh, they're, they're really starting to hit a stride, and we're starting to see customers using those, and that's um, a good sign there. The other half is we have um, projects um, that are more focused in our educational areas, like the COBOL training course and mainframe open education, which are helping around the skills aspect. As these companies know, they're still going to need, you know, even though we're in a down economy, that doesn't take away the training aspect. On the flip side, there's also people are going to be looking to re-career and having the training available and being able to use that as a way for people to identify talent 
is going to be a huge part as well. So I think that's a piece that we're seeing there. I think another, um, and I think our mentorship program kind of flows into there nicely as well. Um, that's going to be something that's just going to continue to grow for us. And I think a third wheel, which is one that we talked about at Open Mainframe Summit um, and has slowly but surely been kind of reiterating in the background is the mainframe is the modernization um, working group um, that has been launched. And where I see that coming into help here is not only just of the tactical of helping sort of redefine the market and add a lot of clarity on this, but as companies are looking to be more cost efficient, they're seeing a lot of mixed messages of how they approach their mainframe infrastructure with that. And being able to have some true thought leadership based upon research, um, based upon you know where the market is, uh, is, is a huge aspect. And those are really long tail things that will build out over time. But the, in, the, in the short term, um, they become opportunities to kind of help focus that work in the area of cost cutting or cost um, optimization, because that's frankly, you know, when you hear the term modernization thrown on the mainframe, it's kind of has been considered a little bit of sort of that dirty word of meaning, you know, you're, you're getting rid of something. Right. And the reality is, is it's probably that's that's kind of like leading things way too far down the road. What it really is, is companies realizing they need to get modern, but they need to figure out with being modern, how do they work efficiently? Because that is part of modernization is efficiency. A, a downturn like this is just a driver for that. Um, it kind of accelerates things. So uh, I, I see that as another way these things are going to come together. What kind of resources are available from the open mainframe project that can help uh, organizations, companies, other players to kind of tame this you know, beast that we're looking at right now? We have, like I said, a lot of our technical projects are, are great times for companies to go back and invest, um, both folks that are vendors that are bringing products to market in the mainframe space. This is an opportunity for them to go and, and look back and say, hey, is this, is this a way that we can bring higher quality products to market at a lower cost by building on top of something or leveraging something like a Zoe, for example? So I think there's gonna be one aspect um, there. Another angle of it is how can we improve sort of our DevOps efficiency as we bring in, you know, as we know, we have a number of legacy tools, you know, COBOL, things like that out there. Um, and there was a great interview I think you did with um, Bank Data um, a few months ago that really tapped into that. And if you're a listener, you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to it, because I think it, it really talked about not just modernizing the tools, but also modernizing how the teams are built and how the training and how your approaches are. Um, and all of the things that they were talking about, all were things that came from the Open Mainframe project. Cobalt Programming Course, um, you know, Cobalt Check, Zoe, all of those things. So I, I think that's going to be um, another angle of it. Um, and then I, I think sort of where I would see a third in there is looking back at the mentorship half of things. Um, this is an opportunity for... Uh, you know, especially at our member companies, but folks that are looking to drive stuff in the open source realm um, to work with the up and coming students and look at that as sort of a way of bringing new um, focuses into their workforce. And the mentorship program is a great place for that. John, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.